So uh, for those of you who were not with us last week, we began a new series, uh, um, the title of which is um, related to the fact that uh, in life, uh, we get distracted. And so the title of the series is Focused, because we get so distracted in many things in life, um, and in particular in the church, we can get distracted. And so this is a series about our vision um, and being fixed on our vision, because as individuals and as a church... Um, we can uh, drift. We can drift from uh, what is most significant and important. Uh, so last week, we talked about uh, our vision to be internally strong and externally focused. Um, and we said that this is a series about talking about being internally strong. There's four messages on that and four messages on being externally focused. And it's built around our vision and then um, our logo. So when you take a look at our logo... Um, last week we mentioned a little bit about this, but when you look at the logo, there's a, there's, there's a point that I want us to see this week, and that is that um, the, the four arrows, you see the four brownish colored arrows pointing in, and then the four white arrows that are going out. You see those, those arrows? So it's, it's eight arrows, right? The four arrows going in represent the four major values of what it means for us to be internally strong, the four going out being externally focused. But that logo, if you were to take away any four arrows, let's, let's, for example, use the internally strong arrows. If you take away the internally strong arrows, the whole image gets changed, right? It ends up being, on this screen, a white-colored cube with a little, you wouldn't even really see the circle in the center. You would just see, well, I guess you would see a, a, a brown circle in the center. Uh, if you were to take away the white arrows... Well, you wouldn't see anything, right? And so our logo even captures this idea that to be internally strong and to be externally focused, we need to be all of it in order for us to truly be on vision, be on mission. Internally strong, externally focused. So last week, we talked about knowing Jesus and his word. And for those of you who maybe weren't here, um, you can always jump on the teaching tab, the sermon tab on the website and get, get the messages. You can live stream, you can download them. Um, all the PowerPoints are always there as well. Uh, but we talked about knowing Jesus and his word. Today is an external focus message about joining Jesus and his, and, and his mission. And to get us started, I have a series of words I'd like you to ponder for just a second. So take a look at, at these words. Disappointment discomfort, discontentment, dissatisfaction, displeasure, disapproval, being disenfranchised. When you look at those words, those seven words, what comes to your mind? What, what, ha what, 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 what joins them all together? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, mm -hmm. the letter D, the idea of dis. Um, but you know what? There's, a, there's, another, there's another thing that joins all of these words together, and it's being an Eagles fan. <laughs> but it's not just being an Eagles fan, it's also being a Steelers fan. Yeah, I'm a Bills fan. That's right. Uh, but not just an Eagles fan or a Steelers fan, but a Dolphins fan or a Browns fan or a Packers fan. Hey, all these losing teams and even being a Bills fan, okay? Four consecutive Super Bowls in the 90s, four consecutive losses. What is it that ties all of this together, those words and being football fans? It's that your team let you down, right? It's that your team failed. It's that your team came up short. It's that your team didn't accomplish the goal. The quarterback threw one too many errant passes. That's Josh Allen. Um, it, they, the receivers had one too many drops, right? The, 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 the cornerbacks, that was a problem with the Eagles, right? Getting burned too often, right? The defense just letting your team down. And when your team does this, they make these mistakes. They don't score enough points. They don't score enough points. They're not good enough. They're not good enough. They don't win. 
And that lets us down, and it makes us frustrated and upset. Now, the, the, the thing about sports is, you know, it's just something that happens. It's just a game, and you can go on in life. But the truth is that these concepts of these ideas, they, they go way beyond just sports. I mean, they, they, do, they, they do count collegiate sports and even high school sports, but, but think about manufacturing. Think, can, can, you, can you say airplanes that have faulty bolts on doors and the, the, the door flies off in the air, right? Like that was in the news just a couple of weeks ago. You, you think, how, how do you think Boeing's feeling? How do you think those of us who fly feel? Can, can you pick the, these words on the, on the side screen, right? Right? Not only in manufacturing, but, but just go, but, but, but how about the musicians, my son was playing his guitar last night, and one of the things he commented is that, hey, one of the things he learned from one of his teachers is that no musician is perfect. They never get it all right, and so really good musicians know how to cover up their mistakes. Artists, craftsmen, on and on and on, right? So what am, what am I painting a picture of? What am I talking about? Anywhere there are people, we make mistakes. Anytime the people make mistakes, it leads us at a place of, these words, right, of being disappointed and, and if we're really passionate about it, disenfranchised. And when you dig a little deeper and you begin to think about who you are and who I am as a person, the reality is, is that you and I also make those mistakes. And so for as frustrated as we might get from, the, from, from our quarterback who, who makes an errant throw, we, we get just as frustrated with ourselves when we yell at our spouse or our kids in frustration, right? Or, or when, um, when we, uh, in, uh, in a moment of weakness of, or maybe a moment of loneliness, pursue an extramarital affair. Or maybe um, out of jealousy, say something cutting to bring somebody else down, right? And, and on and on and on we can go, and thinking about who we are as people and how none of us do it right all the time. And when we don't do it right, it creates these emotions, these negative emotions. Now, what's interesting is the Bible talks about this. And many of us know this. We're, we're, we're aware of this. Some of us, maybe we're not. And hopefully this will help, to, uh, help you to understand a few things about who we are as people. But the Bible helps us to understand that all people, Sin. That's what it means to come up short. Your football team, when they let you down, they've sinned, right? They've, they've, they've missed the mark. They didn't accomplish the goal of getting the ball across the end zone enough times. Sin is, is, is simply that. It's, it's, it's missing, missing the mark. It's, it, it's coming up short. It's, it's, it's not getting it done. The Bible goes on to say that this creates a big problem, right? It creates a problem in, in our relationships with each other. And so when you sin or against me or I sin against you, it brings another thing. It brings this thing called separation. It brings a break in the, right, or in, in the, in the relationship. Now, it doesn't happen only with people, but it also, the Bible helps us understand, it happens also between us and God. And the thing about God is that God is perfect. So this is pretty cool. God always does it right. He always makes the perfect throw. He always makes the catch. He always makes the tackle. He always scores. He always wins. He, he, he's righteous. He's pure. In him is no, no darkness at all, John says in 1 John. And so you have a perfect God in everybody else who, who fails. And as a result, we're failing him. Right, so when somebody sins against you and you're not doing anything, and they yell at you, they they they, they did, and you were right. It's it's them against you, right? And so 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 God is righteous, and and we mess things up, and and thus what happens is it creates a barrier, a barrier in relationship, separation, disenfranchisement, and and it's God who's disappointed. Who experiences discomfort, discontentment, dissatisfaction, displeasure, disapproval, and just in his relationship with us? He's feeling those things because of how we've treated him. Now, all of that 
leads to an even further negative thing that the Bible helps us to see, and that is that someday all people will experience a day of judgment in which God is going to take a look at our lives. And the Bible further says that that day of judgment looks like for those who haven't made reconciliation with him, eternal separation, eternally separated from him. Now, all of this is very bad news, except this morning what we're going to look at is some good news. The Bible says this, that God is in the business of reconciliation. He doesn't like the fact that we threw an errant pass, that we've missed the mark and we've come up short, and he's made a way for us to win. Not only that, but he invites us, those of us who understand that, to be on his team and to communicate that message to others. So the big idea this morning is built around this one word, reconcile, or reconciliation. Comes from 2 Corinthians. This is the passage we're going to look at, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So if you have your Bible, you can, you can go ahead and, and turn there. And while you're turning there, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to us, if you go back to the, to the to prior slide, um, I want to read to us uh, what it means when we talk about joining God in his mission. Okay, so again, this is being externally focused. This is, a, this is a message about us being externally focused as a church. And the first arrow, when we talk about being externally focused, we talk about joining God in his mission. And, and here's what we write. Joining in God's mission looks like this. We believe that God is a missionary God. God is a missionary who sent his son Jesus to redeem a broken world and that all who follow Jesus are then sent by him into their unique cultural environment to live out that message in both word and in action. And this is what it means to join God in his mission, that we are sent by him as missionaries, as he's a missionary we are sent by him as missionaries. It's not people we send someplace else. It's all of us who are, who are sent. Now you see there's a, a, a few passages of scripture that are listed there. And the 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21 text is the one that we are going to dig in this morning. All right? So here we go. Let's read this text together. Um, and before we read it, just a little bit of context Verse, if you start in verse 1, which, you know, sometime this week, I invite you to, to read, just to read the whole chapter. But if you start in verse 1, what you find is that Paul is talking about how living life is hard and how living in the body is hard, and it hurts. I actually met um, with Julian and Cindy on Tuesday. I walked into, into, uh, into the room, and man, Julian did not look good at all. So thin. Just, just not like himself. And I had read this passage earlier in the morning, and so I read it together with them. But what Paul says in verse 1 is that we are in a tent, and our tent, he's referring to the body, is broken, and it doesn't work right, and it fails us. And as a result, we groan inwardly. We hurt. We feel that pain. And we want out of it. And then as you get down to verse 10 in this section, he, he talks about how everybody someday is going to stand before God and experience his judgment. And then he transitions into this conversation about how God reconciles people to himself. So let's jump into verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. And this is from God. It comes from God, who reconciled us to himself. God reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. And so we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, if you listen carefully through this passage, you saw and heard repeated over and over that word reconcile or being reconciled or reconciliation. That word um, dictionary definition for you here on the side screens, Greek-English lexicon translation. Uh, reconcile means to reestablish proper, friendly, interpersonal relations after these have been disrupted or broken. The confidential features of this series of meanings involve, number one, a disruption of friendly relations because of, number two, presumed or real provoca provocation, three, overt behavior designed to remove hostility, and four, the restoration of original friendly relations. So it means to reconcile, to make things right with one another, reconciliation. Now, on Monday, I found myself sitting in the dentist office. It was at 4 o'clock. The bills were to play that evening. Well, actually, the bills were to play at 4.30. So I'm, I'm in the dentist chair, and I can't even watch the, the beginning of the game. But a gentleman came in, and he was a salesman. Um, he, he sat down after talking to the receptionist. He noticed me in my Bill's sweatshirt, and he said, good luck to your team tonight. He said, I'm an Eagles fan, and I'm not going to be watching. He said, they've already broke my heart and let me down so many times over the past couple of weeks. Disenfranchised, disappointed, heart hurt, right? Feeling like the Eagles did something to him. So since the Eagles did something to him, he was going to do something back and not watch them, not pay attention. Now, reconciliation, though, is what's going to happen in that guy's life this coming summer, just like what happens in all of our hearts who get our hearts broke when our team loses, right? This coming summer, your team ownership's going to make some changes, and they're going to bring in some new coaches and some new players, and you're going to get renewed hope, and then you're going to become a fan all over again, and you're going to root for your team through the summer, right? And then there's this reconciliation of relationship. That's the idea of what it is that Paul is saying happens between God and between people. So when you look at those five terms, or if you go to the next slide here with them, um, or maybe back to the, there we go. Um, you see the five words reconcile. The, the, the first idea is that God is the one who's reconciling us to himself, and he does it through Christ. So for as bad as it is to have your heart broken because your team threw too many errant passes, it's far worse for us to be in a situation in which we are separated eternally from God. That's hell forever. And then how can we fix it? I was reading a story this past week of, of a guy who was interacting with another, another guy from another faith. Uh, he's a Muslim man. And he asked the man, he said, um, in your faith... Are there, any, are there any sins? So, so the Muslim guy had initiated the conversation. He, he was curious about some things about Christians. And he'd asked him some questions. So, so this, this man who's now a Christian asked the Muslim guy some questions. He said, do, do you in your Muslim faith, do you have any sins? To which the, the Muslim man said, yes, there's, there's, there's many sins. And then, and then the Christian guy said to him, well, do you ever commit those sins? 
Well, yes, I commit those sins. And he said, as a matter of fact, I'm going to commit some of those sins very intentionally right now. And then um, the Christian man said to him, he said, uh, what happens when you commit those sins? He said, oh, well, it's very bad. It's very bad. God, God gets very mad at you, and God may send you to hell. And then the Christian guy said to him, well, well what, 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 how, how are you going to stop this from happening? He said, well, I, I don't know. I just hope that God, Allah, will, will forgive me. Based on what? Based on me doing a few good things, right? And that's the, that's the logic. This is the way that at people, this is the way that we work this out. Right? When we, we, know, we know as people that we fall short. We know as people we, we yell and that's not right and we steal and that's not right and we get jealous and that's not right and we commit adultery and that's not right. We, don't, we know this stuff and we, we know when people do it to us. But we don't have a system as people, for how to, how, to, how to deal with that separation and to bring reconciliation. And so the most common system that people come up with is to do enough things and hope that God will forgive me. I mean, this is the idea dating thousands of years back. And read it in history. Read it with all of the gods. Read hu human philosophy. Just try to reconcile by being good enough. But what this text teaches us is that God is the one who brings reconciliation. It's not people. People can't do it. People aren't good enough to do it. We can't come up with a good enough system. We can't figure it out on our own. It's God who does the work of bringing apart re reconciliation. And God is the one who's been offended. So it's like you being really mean to a friend or to your spouse and your spouse coming to you and seeking to make reconciliation with you. It should be them, right? They're the ones that were mean. They're the ones that should come. But no, in this case, it's God. God comes to us. He doesn't like the fact that we're separated. And, and how, in what way? The text tells us God reconciles us to himself through Christ. And the very last verse of the section explains how that works, right? So in verse 21, God made him, Jesus, who had no sin, Jesus who is sinless, who is perfect, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So Jesus and us switch places. So that God says Jesus is like us. God, Jesus takes our sin so that his interaction with us can be like his interaction with Jesus who is perfect and sinless. That is amazing. That God goes to great lengths to come into the world as a human being, the person Jesus to take our sin so that in him we might become right. So that God could interact with us the way that he interacts with his son, Jesus. These are all mind-blowing concepts, right? And, and try to explain them and comprehend them. They're, they're, they're deep and difficult, and some of it we just don't understand what it means and how it is that this transaction takes place and it takes care of our sin. But this is what scripture says. It says that God is in the business of bringing reconciliation of people to himself and it happens through Christ. Which is amazing news. Now, the second thing that this text tells us is that God invites us to join him in bringing reconciliation. And so when you look at the, 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 uh, the, the, black, the, the blue words, all the blue words, there's, there's, there's three different ideas or three different references here to which Paul is saying that God is inviting us, those who have been reconciled to him, to be agents of reconciliation, to be 
communicators of this message of reconciliation to join him in his business and in his work of reconciling the world to himself. Right? So you see the, 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 the first phrase is, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So if you've been reconciled to God, he's given you, he's given you the ministry of reconciliation. Secondly, the second phrase we see is that we have been committed, or he's committed to us, he's given it to us, the message of reconciliation. And then third, we see he calls us an ambassador. An ambassador is a representative. Is somebody, you know, for a U.S. ambassador, we send him over to another place, to another country to represent the United States. And, and so here God is saying, hey, you're going to be my ambassador. You're going to be my representative. And it's going to be as though I'm speaking through you to other people this message of reconciliation because there's people everywhere who have this wrong idea that in order to be on God's good side, you've got to do enough good things to get on his side. And it doesn't matter what religion, whatever religious system there is, it always boils down to you've got to do enough good things, right things, and somehow get God to be appeased and to receive you. And none of it works. And so God has called those of us who have received his reconciliation to join him and being the ones to go and to deliver that. Now, it's interesting if you just take that word to... Um, um, to be uh, ministers of reconciliation, or minister of reconciliation. Um, that the word minister uh, is rooted with the, the in, into the in the Greek word of diakonos, which is the idea of serving. And it's as though um, God is saying, "Look, you you are going to be a server, a, a, a waiter, or a waitress. You ever go out to to, to dinner, right? And a waiter, or a waitress d- delivers to you your food." You order it, and they go back to the kitchen, and they get it, and they bring it out. And, 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 and what the idea in this is, is that you are going to be like a waiter, delivering food and water and drink and good things to people that's going to meet the, the deepest needs of their soul. You are a minister, a server of reconciliation to other people. Now, as a church, we've been living this out. And as a church, we need to continue to live this out. To be externally focused means that we join God in his mission. It means that we understand that we are ambassadors of reconciliation. So I went back and just pulled a few little stories, really a couple sentences from people's extended stories, who stood here in front of us when they were baptized. And I'm just going to read a few of them just really, really quickly and, and just throw a bunch of other snippets at us about how it is we as a church are and have been joining God in his mission. And so last week I mentioned Ella, and here's another part of her, of her testimony when she stood right here. She said, I had no way of knowing about God. No context. Remember, she was, grew up in communist China student right down the street, Penn State Harrisburg. I had no way of knowing about God, no context in which to know of him. When I was young, there was something inside of me calling out to something. I was interested in him, but I had no one who could tell me until I met my friend at Penn State, who was a part of Hope Community Church. Right? And so this friend joined God in the work that God was doing in Ella's life, right? He was at work in her, reconciling her to himself, but he used somebody from our church who was in relationship with Ella to communicate how reconciliation with God happens. And then we baptized Ella. Um, Another story here from Rachel. It's not that I didn't believe there was a God. It's just that I had no way of knowing anything about him until until God brought the people of Hope Community Church into my life to tell me. And then Scott, we just baptized him not too long ago. Um, He writes this, or he, he said this, and you go and listen to his testimony. Sometime around 2018, 2019, I first attended Hope Community Church. I, I work with Matt Wynn, played bass back here, or electric back here this morning. I work with Matt Wynn, and he invited me. 
as he and I share interests in guitar and music. And then Scott went on to say how Hope's, Hope Church has some of the most beautiful and moving praise music I've ever heard. I was, it, all this music was, it was new to me, and, and particularly talking about the lyrics. And the songs of worship that were like a quenching rain to my parched soul. And so, so even there, it's the imagery of like serving and bringing something to drink. Right? And so Matt's relationship with Scott at work, just a, just a co-worker relationship, and God is at work in Scott's life. And, and what does Matt know about that? Except to just be a minister of reconciliation and to have conversation and engage him in conversation, which ultimately led to an invitation to worship and which led to further conversations over extended periods of time over a couple of years before it was that Scott came to a full understanding of what it means that God is reconciling himself to him through Jesus Christ. And now Scott's a follower of Jesus. His wife's a follower of Jesus. We de dedicated their, their, their baby, just the last child dedication. My daughter currently is um, in an African country. Uh, and she sent us a WhatsApp message yesterday. And then actually she called us too. So I listened to the message this morning, but we talked to her yesterday. And she went on to, 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 to share with us the story, which, um, so she went with the Ghana team. She, she was there for, for the two weeks, and the team's now back, and she stayed on for another six. Um, not in Ghana. She's in another, in another African country, but she's a nurse practitioner, so she's working in a hospital there, um, along with a, a college friend. And on Friday night, Erica had the opportunity of being present um, with a, a woman who uh, Erica's college friend, Teresa, has been uh, gotten to know uh, through, through her work at the hospital. She was a patient. Uh, but this woman, over the past six months, has shown interest in spiritual things, in things of Jesus. She is already a spiritual person. But on Friday, she wanted to hear all about who Jesus is. And so Erica and Teresa had the opportunity to sit there and to go from Genesis through the, into the New Testament and explain the gospel and how God reconciles people to himself through Jesus Christ. And at the end, this lady, this, this young woman, young, she's a widow, five, five children she has. She decided, I want to be a follower of Jesus. And so then Erica said, uh, la yesterday, last night, they had a big old party. And the woman said, you know, I, I have not even thought about eating any food today because I am so full inside with understanding uh, these truths. Erica and Teresa, messengers of reconciliation, right? Erica being externally focused, joining God in his mission, right? Individually, life on life, communicating these truths. This is what it looks like for, for us as a church to join God in his mission, whether it be local or global, stories of how we are being that way. Uh, and you know, last week we did it, we ended the service with a little poll, and we're going to do the same here in just a minute. Um, and the, it just really quick, survey results from that were, it was fantastic. It was, it was really, it was great to see how many of you say, you know what, I I am pursuing Jesus and his word. I, I am, I'm seriously uh, in, involved in that. But then, but then some say, you know, uh, the first question was, I, I have no interest in, in, in Jesus and his word. There was two people who checked that box. There were six people who said, um, I, don't, I don't know a lot about Jesus and his word, but I'm interested in knowing more. And, and when, when you compare that, that six uh, or eight people to the, to, to the total of those that filled out the polls, 17%, 17% of those that filled out the poll last Sunday, it's, it's an indication that we as a church are, somebody want to help, uh, Carol, you get that taken care of over there? That phone just started, started talking because it heard me say something. Google just started talking back. I say, it's, it's amazing how those phones do that, isn't it? Isn't it? But that poll indicates that you are being externally focused. There's people, some of you are here today, and it's like you're here because somebody invited you. 
So let me just run through several opportunities or several ways we're helping you to think about this. Like, how can I be a messenger of reconciliation? Or where can I be a messenger of reconciliation? So you, you can, you can maybe, it's, maybe it's youth. Uh, you can serve at Cornerstone Youth Center, Rainbow's End here in Donegal, uh, in Mount Joy. You can serve as a mentor in Donegal schools. You can serve as a mentor at Elizabethtown schools. You can serve as a, as a leader in Awana right here at Hope Community Church or with Explosion Youth and the whole bunch of kids that are a part of that. Um, you, can, you can serve at Hope Within, one of our ministry partners that provides free health care to people who are uninsured. You can, you can serve at Community Place on Washington. And there's several people from our church who already are doing this, um, serving at the food bank, clothing bank, Winter Shelter, which provides housing. Matter of, speaking of the, the food bank, um, we're collecting food right out in the lobby. Uh, you, can, you can read a little bit more about what, what we're collecting. Um, th- there, you can participate with uh, um, Tony, uh, who's giving leadership to a ministry on Etown campus, um, connecting with college students. Uh, and those are just some, some things locally. Yeah, Ben, why don't you guys come on up? Um, but, but, but think about this, too. Those of you who are parents, you are messengers of reconciliation. If you have little kids who do not know Jesus because they don't know Jesus because no person does, we're all born separate from God. We're all, we're all born with um, uh, this wall of separation. But you as parents, it's a huge opportunity for you to live in front of your kids as, as a, a messenger of reconciliation. For those of you, and there's many of you, who, who foster and adopt children, and you, in that process, are messengers of reconciliation. Um, as you live alongside your neighbors, there's, there was a group of guys who yesterday were helping a neighbor from one of the guys who's, and this neighbor is now, she's a, she's a widow, and she needed some assistance, and she doesn't know Jesus, and so some people came alongside to assist and to help her. Um, I think of a conversation I had earlier this week with a woman who started a Bible study in her neighborhood. She just went, all of her na- neighbor ladies, she just said, hey, I'm going to do a study if you're interested. And la- last year, there were four of them that, that came to our house. And this year, now there's nine of them that come to our house every week, every Tuesday or Wednesday night. For It's supposed to be an hour and a half, and they always stay for like two and a half or three hours. Nine women, don't, none of them know Jesus. And this is what it looks like to, to join God in his mission. It's for, it's for, for us. It's for you. It's for all of us. It's, it's, it's not for missionaries who get sent someplace else. We're all missionaries if we've been reconciled. We're all ambassadors. We're all sent. Wherever it is that we go, as the arrows say, we all go to different places. We all live in, a different, in different environments. We all have different relationships. But every one of us, we're all messengers of reconciliation. So there's a, oh, what's his name? Um, I'm not going to find his name. I'll just say his quote. Somebody, somebody said this, said that to invest your life, um, the most important place to invest your life is in something that is going to have eternal significance or, or la- that's going to last beyond your life. And you know what's going to last beyond your life is if you're a messenger of reconciliation and you introduce just one person, just one person to Jesus. Life transformative for the rest of that person's life. There's a poll. Okay, we did this last week. You can grab your phones, snap a, snap a shot of the QR code. Or if you have the app, you can just open your church app and you go to the sign-up section, and there you get the poll. And right now, we're just going to give you a minute or so to think through these questions. Um, and if you would like somebody to talk with you, there's a place where you can type in your name, and somebody will reach out, and uh, we'll be glad to answer your questions, walk with you through whatever it is that you have. Notice there's also in the poll an opportunity for you to tell your stories. This is how I, if you are, being a messenger of reconciliation. And you can go ahead and type that out and share that with us. Take a minute or two to do this, and then the worship team will lead us.
invite you to stand with us as we close in song.
God is externally focused, and we as a church, he invites us to join him in being externally focused. Let's stay focused on this, church. Stay focused on this, this week as you live your life. For those of you who maybe you've never received Jesus, you don't understand what all this means, or maybe you're ready to, I invite you just to say, God, I put my trust in Jesus. I don't know what it all means, but reconcile me to yourself and receive what that means and the life transformation that it brings. Go Hope Community Church as agents, messengers, ambassadors of reconciliation. Have a great week.